One guy made 50 million pounds, and another guy, uh, he says the numbers aren't final, but uh, in excess of 100 million euros. And uh, the um, thank you, and you know, you changed my life, and you know. Well, but that does change your life. Even though I go like this, I make light of it, but I hear, not every day, but I mean, especially from about the first week in December through the middle of January, people that have disappeared. Of course, they have not told anybody how they learned to do that. They said that they attended a, read a book, listened to a blog, you know, had an epiphany while on safari in Botswana. <laughs> but I know why they did it, and that's why they're uh, contacting me. Um, the um, um, both guys, uh, one one guy in property, one guy uh, in bricks and mortar, and another guy just bought a um, um, six thousand eight hundred and something square meter house. What's that about twenty thousand square feet? Is that yeah the house. And um, this is an exaggeration. He lived in a shoebox, but that's not a true. But it sounds good. By two, three years from now, he lived in a shoebox, and now he lives, you know, in an 18, 20,000 square foot house. But he didn't relate how much money he made. But um, he, uh, since he didn't used to have that kind of house, I assume he made some shekels someplace. And it's interesting that the emails that they and the information they relate back to me is what they obviously the most important thing to them and uh, all the emails I mean they're pretty long but the one the first sentence was the house and this guy but he didn't say you know how much money he made um, um, maybe he forgot or I'll get that in another email um, another guy who uh, was uh, from some little village in some place, and you know, uh, but this was dirt on the floor. This wasn't. This is an exaggeration. Uh, he didn't say how, uh, the size of the deals he was doing, but he was doing deals. And thank you, Mr. Pena. Yada yada yada. Now, the um, and all three of these are guys that uh, haven't I haven't seen in at least two or three years, maybe five years. Everybody doesn't do it like a, a jackrabbit out of the um, starting box. And, it, and I told you the first or second day of the regular seminar that some are going to come out screaming. I mean, you, you, you won't even see the dust, you know, uh, uh, that you're, in the, in your, you're on the same track. And some will come out like the um, uh, tortoise and tortoises and tortoises, uh, plural tortoise. Turtles, no, the Galap, no, no, the, the and Galapagos, you know, the uh, in. Uh, the, okay, anyway, it will come out like that, you know, these big bohemian things that weigh uh, 200 kilos, uh, and the, the difference is again, the the, uh, the turtle can't go forward if unless it sticks its neck out and it sticks its its little uh, 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 feet out, and that's when it's most vulnerable, right? That's when you know, uh, it's. Um, Subject to being eaten, although not many people are eating those big uh, uh, turtles, and the, and the rabbits are, you know, they get right down to the goal line, but many of them don't punch it in. Uh, the and I know that's why you called your company, uh, but you've been sitting on the two yard line now for seventeen years. <laughs> the. Um, But I will push you for the next year uh, as if you, you were a jackrabbit, because I'm not really interested in your uh, turtle motion. But you've got to stick your necks out. You've got to take risks. You're not going to take risks. And for those of you that have assets, uh, you're going to be afraid, and you've already asked me the questions. Can I separate my company, and can I do this, and can I do that? And so they don't get it, and I put it in my wife's name. Because you're afraid. 
You're afraid you're going to fuck it up. You got all of the kinds of rationale why you want to do that. But if you were, if you were reasonably sure, and balls to the wall, you just lay your balls out on the, uh, and go. But we know that you're not, because you don't. I've heard probably a thousand ways. Uh, can I do this without, you know, but the real question is, can I do it without taking risk? Or can I do it without taking risks that I'm going to risk my little pennies that I have over here already? That's the real question, but you don't ask me that way. And some of you, in the, you poke fun at some of you in here when the, you've asked the question, but the bottom line is, if you were absolutely sure, or somebody had a gun at the back of the head of one of your children, Bill, if you needed uh, $100,000 cash in 48 hours, and somebody uh, is going to blow your kid, uh, your son's, uh, one of your kids' uh, brains out, somehow you'd come up with $100,000 cash. So, I mean, same for all of you. So if you acted as if every day was your last day, you'd get this done in weeks. Weeks. And you wouldn't, you spend a lot less time reframing the questions. <laughs> In fact, you'd spend no time reframing the question. You know, you think, well, what if that asshole, he, he gets a twitch or he gets a hiccup and he pulls the trigger? And just like when, you know, you heard my story, why I don't do drugs, my dad put a gun, loaded gun to my head. He said, there's only one cure for motherfucking drugs, it's a motherfucking bullet in your motherfucking head, and I'm the motherfucker that'll put it in your head. And he held it to my head, and my mother's screaming and yelling, Manny, Manny, you know, you, you might squeeze the trigger. And I still remember looking out of the corner of my eye and seeing the bullets in the chamber. I can still see those motherfuckers, because you see on the edges, you can't see the ones in the center, but the edges of the chamber, you can see. I can still, I can, I can, I can still see them. And I didn't do motherfucking drugs. Because I knew he'd be the motherfucker to put a motherfucking bullet in my motherfucking head. Of course, now. Oh, I mean, I'd be suing. Uh, of course, kids sue for divorce. Now I'd sue him for divorce, uh, not to be my father. And I'd go to school, and the government had put me in some special place to protect. And so now we've come all the way. And my, my dad would say to, to your parents, if they were contemporaries, well, how's your program working out with the dipshit with the fucking thing on his head? You know? How's your program <coughs> working out with uh, uh, the reframer? Uh, and if your parents were candid, they'd say, well, it didn't work out like I thought. You know, it turned out to be a weenie. By the way, now the, um, the uh, QLA for dummies and the snowflake test are just dwarfing everything else due to the uh, traffic. I mean, they're just they're dwarfing it. I don't know if it's a, the Christmas season or something, holiday season, that, you know, but a lot of people set goals and they're going to change things in the new year. I think that's what the site's suffering from. And then come January 6th or 8th or 10th, it'll be zero. It'll be zero and nobody's doing anything. Okay, now we're going to break out uh, does everybody uh, understand the first case that they're working on? And if you got through your first and second case, you can just go on to the third. Go to the third. Yeah. In the order that's on Correct. the Correct. And some of you are, are gonna, we're going to hear this, two or three of the cases more than once. And that's on purpose. On purpose. And each one will reframe the data. You'll be surprised to see how reading the exact same information we'll get different answers. Exact same information. So yes, sir? We prepare to present any case that we've finished. We should be prepared to present any case Correct. that we've finished. Correct. Very good. Very good. You should have seen how he dressed when he first came here. But anyway, now we've got to work on your hair yeah, in 2018. I, know, I, know. <laughs> I mean, in 2018, yeah, we, we got to work on your hair. Uh, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for it. Well, I mean, you know, but the, uh, 
Mr. Peepers, do you, all you guys know who Mr. Peepers was? He was a scientist guy in the 50s and 60s at a show. He doesn't look like him. But, uh, but uh, back there, uh, the uh, British bow tie with his glasses, that's what Mr. Peepers looked like. Mr. Peepers was a scientist, you know. And, uh, the, and he'd get up there with his little pointer and he'd point to, you know, this is an amoeba and this is this, this and that. And but I guess the program never got any place other than the United States. But when Mr. Peepers died about five years ago, I mean, uh, he had taught generations. It was like the first thing uh, before you go to school, uh, you'd see in preschool, you'd be watching that. But um, okay, no questions? Okay, YouTube, thank you. Have a happy holidays and go fuck yourselves.